You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on momentum and collisions. The topic of this video is momentum conservation and explosion analysis. And here's what we wish to learn today. What exactly is meant by saying that momentum is conserved in an explosion? And how do you use the momentum conservation principle in order to solve physics word problems involving explosions? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the law of momentum conservation, which states that for any collision or explosion occurring within an isolated system, the total momentum of the two objects would be conserved or would remain unchanged. Here we have a picture of a red cart and a blue cart at rest on a track. Since each individual object has zero momentum, the system has a total momentum of zero. The red cart is equipped with a spring-loaded plunger, which when released, pushes the two carts in opposite directions. That causes the red cart to have a velocity of 3 meters per second to the left, and the blue cart of 6 meters per second to the right. Since each object has momentum, how could the total momentum here be equal to zero? The trick is to understand that momentum is a vector and has a direction. So the red cart's momentum is directed leftward. You might call it negative. To calculate it, you'd go mass times velocity, which would mean you go 2 times negative 3. And that's negative 6 for the red cart. And for the blue cart, it has momentum to the right, which we could call positive. And you would calculate it by mass times velocity. That's 1 times 6, and that's a po positive 6. The total is 0. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. This is an example of what we would call an isolated system. The force that propels the carts in opposite directions comes from within the system. It's the force of that plunger of the red cart pushing on the blue cart and the blue cart pushing on the red cart. It's an internal force, and in such situations, we expect momentum to be conserved. This little thought experiment is about a homemade tennis ball cannon. And before I talk about it, I should warn you boys and girls, don't do this at home. This is very dangerous. All right, consider a homemade tennis ball cannon that fires a tennis ball forward at high speed. During the explosion, there's this interaction between the cannon and the tennis ball. What do we know about this interaction? Well, according to Newton's third law, we know that the force on the cannon is equal and opposite to the force on the tennis ball. We could write it like that. And it makes sense that these forces act on the cannon and the ball for the same amount of time. And given these two mathematical statements, it would make mathematical sense that the force on the cannon multiplied by the time over which it acts is equal to the negative of the force on the ball over the time over which it acts. In other words, you'd say the impulse on the ball equals the opposite of the impulse on the cannon. And given that impulse equal momentum change, we could reason towards this important statement here, that the mass of the cannon times the velocity change of the cannon, that is the momentum change of the cannon, is equal to the opposite of the mass of the ball times the velocity change of the ball. The momentum change of the cannon is equal and opposite to the momentum change of the ball. So here's the situation before the explosion. Both objects are at rest. Both objects have zero momentum. After the explosion, the ball goes flying forward with, say, we'll make it up, 100 units of momentum and the cannon recoils backwards with negative 100 units of momentum. If we look at this explosion from the viewpoint of the ball, it has changed its momentum from zero to positive 100. That's a change in momentum of 100 units, positive 100 units. And looked at from the perspective of the cannon, it has changed its momentum from zero to neg negative 100 units, and that's a change of neg negative 100 units. In other words, the momentum change of the cannon is equal and opposite to the momentum momentum change in the ball. If you've been following this video tutorial series, you know that I like to use momentum tables to keep track of momentum and to show the law of momentum conservation. I'm going to do that here for the red cart, blue cart explosion. Before the explosion, they both are at rest. So the total amount of momentum for the red cart before the explosion and of the blue cart before the explosion is zero. I can put that in the before explosion column for the red and the blue cart. Now for the bottom row, we're keeping track of the total amount of momentum, that is combined amount, the red plus the blue cart. So together, that's zero units of momentum for the system. After the explosion, there should still be zero units of momentum. So let's analyze the red cart and the blue cart for after the explosion. For the red cart, its mass is 2 and its speed is 25 meters per second, but it's moving to the left. So when I go m times v, I'm going to go 
2 times negative 25, and that's negative 50 for the red card. For the blue card, it's m times v, but that would be 1 times positive 50, and that would be positive 50 units of momentum. If you combine the negative 50 and the positive 50, it would make sense that they total to zero, the same amount we had before the explosion. Now let's look at the last column, which is the change in momentum of the red card, the blue card, and of the system. So the red card changes from 0 to negative 50. That's a change of negative 50. The blue card changes from 0 to positive 50, and that's a change of positive 50. And the total row, the combined system momentum change, would be just what you get when you add these two numbers, negative 50 plus positive 50 add to 0. So there's our table showing the two big principles of momentum conservation. The first one is in the bottom row. If you look there, you'll notice that the total momentum before explosion equal the total momentum after the explosion. And the second principle is in this last column. If you look there, you notice that the change in momentum of object one, the red card, is equal and opposite to the change in momentum of object two, the blue card. In the three explosion examples I've shown, there were two objects with each object moving in opposite directions after the explosion. In order for their total system momentum to be zero, we would expect that if an object had one half the mass, it would have to be moving with twice the velocity. And if an object had one third the mass, it would have to be moving with three times the velocity. Objects with one-fourth the mass would have to have four times the velocity of the other object. For instance, here we have a mass ratio of two to one. The blue cart has one-half the mass of the red cart. But if you look at their velocities, the blue cart's velocity is two times that of the red cart's velocity after the explosion. Here's another instance where the blue cart has one-third the mass of the red cart. But after the explosion, the blue cart has three times the velocity of the red cart. And as our final example, we have here a blue cart with one-fourth the mass of the red cart. But if you look at its velocity of 60, that's four times the velocity of the red cart's 15 meters per second velocity. So we would reason that in all three of these situations, that the ratio of their masses is always inversely proportional to the ratio of the cart velocities. This is my first example of using momentum conservation to solve a physics word problem like this one. It's a 54 gram tennis ball that's at rest inside of a stationary 1300 gram tennis ball cannon. The cannon is fired and then it recoils backwards at 2.3 meters per second. Determine the velocity of the ball when it leaves the muzzle of the cannon. So my tip is to write down what you know, what you're looking for, and then to use this equation to solve for the unknown. So what I know is the mass of the ball and the mass of the cannon, and the velocity change of the cannon, which goes from 0 to 2.3 meters per second to the left. So I call that negative 2.3 meters per second. What I'm looking for is the velocity of the ball, which is going to be related to the velocity change of the ball. So here's the equation I'm going to use, and I'm going to put the mass of the ball, the mass of the cannon, and the velocity change of the cannon into the equation. I substitute it in, and it looks like this. And I'm going to try to solve for the unknown, delta v of ball. So to do that, you have to divide both sides of the equation by 54 grams to get the velocity change of the ball by itself. Then you have to pull out your calculator and solve for the velocity change of the ball. It comes out to be about 55 meters per second. That's how much the ball's velocity changes by. Now it starts at zero, we're told that in the problem, and it changes by 55. So if that's the case, the final velocity of the ball is 55 meters per second. In my second example, I have two figure skaters at rest on the ice. I know the masses of the male skater and the female skater. I'm told that they push off one another, and after the push off, the female skater is moving backwards at 3.11 meters per second. I want to know the post push off velocity of the male skater. So I write down what I know. I know the mass of the male, the mass of the female skater, and the velocity change of the female skater. I'm going to call it negative 3.11 because she was moving backwards with a speed of 3.11. Now I'm looking for the velocity of the male skater after the push-off. So I'm going to use this generic equation for the mass of the male skater times its velocity change equal the negative of the mass of the female skater times the velocity change of the female. And I substitute known values into the equation 
equation, and I end up with this result. To solve for the velocity change of the male, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 62.1 kilograms. It turns into this form. Now I pull out my calculator, and I find out what is the velocity change of the male skater, and it ends up being 2.14 meters per second. The male was originally at rest, and then changes by 2.14 meters per second, so the final velocity of the male is 2.14 meters per second. I'd like to finish with an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out? If you like the video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a question or comment in the comments section below. Here's your action plan. All four resources can be found on our website, and there are links to them in the description section below. The first is a simulation, a chance to manipulate variables and play. The second is a set of problems. You'll get a problem, you'll get an answer, and you'll get an audio-guided solution. There's five problems having to do with explosions. The third is a concept builder, always awesome ways to practice what you've learned. And the fourth is a tutorial page from our website. Pick one to try. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.